As Test Drive continues to grow, we're going to have a lot of firsts, and especially with 2018, we've got a lot of new things going on on this show. This Mini, for example, is another first for us. It's actually the first Mini that I've ever driven, mostly because I just really haven't been able to fit in any of their previous models. You know, I am tall, six foot, but I also pack on a lot of extra weight, so it's a lot harder for me to get into something like the Mini Cooper 3-door. That's why it's great that they have a subcompact crossover SUV like this. Our spotlight today is on this 2018 Mini John Cooper Works Countryman All 4. <sighs> My god, that's a lot. It's a lot of name for a car like this. But there's actually a lot going on with it. This is really the top end trim for the Mini Countryman. Now you can get the electric version, which technically is more expensive than this, but this is the one I think a lot of the enthusiasts are going to be looking at. So we're going to be showing you everything about this car, taking it for a drive and going over everything you need to know if you're in the market for this very hot subcompact crossover SUV. You're going to have to bear with me a little bit today because I don't have my cameraman, so we are using the old Canon 60 that we used to film all of our episodes on Test Drive on, and it's sitting on a tripod, so I can't really move around, but you'll see in our B-roll kind of what we're talking about. So up front, it is, you know, a very similar design to what Mini's been offering for quite some time. Now, you do have LED headlights, and uh, one thing I noticed, which is something that we don't usually see really in any German cars these days, it does have cornering lamps, so when you turn the wheel, a light will come just on the side here to light up quite well, actually, as you're turning a corner. It's very cool. Aside from that, there's really not a whole lot going on the front. You do have the John Cooper Works rims here with much, much bigger brake calipers. You've got like a fake grill here that says, again, the John Cooper Works uh, badge in it. And then really the rest of the car, it's uh, one of the things that you really do find with Mini is how much customization you can get. So, I mean, this is very unique for this specific car, but you do have the red caps here on your mirrors, as well as a red roof, which, you know, I mean, for the most part, it's a streamlined vehicle, streamlined design, and uh, it's not too flashy, black with the little red accents here and there, but you could, could certainly get a lot more. You can get a stripe along the side, get a stripe along the hood, you can really get funky with the colors, which is certainly one of the things that you can do with Mini, really over a lot of other vehicles. There's a lot of customization to really make it your own car. There's also a lot of packages as well. This one comes with the comfort access, so you can open up the doors. There's actually an LED light strip in the door, so when you unlock it, you can kind of see where your door handles are, but you have comfort access on the front doors. And on the driver's door, there is a welcome light. It's the mini logo. It shows up uh, really even in bright light. You can see it quite well. It's quite nice, uh, a little different. We don't usually see that from, you know, you can certainly buy it aftermarket from the OEM. Moving down the rest of the car, really straightforward. There's nothing else to surprise you. You do have the roof rails up top. Uh, and as a subcompact crossover SUV, you are kind of expecting to be using this more for maybe putting like a little raft or something on top. You want to go do some outdoorsy kind of things. The roof rails are on there for that. And then out back, it really looks like, you know, Mini put the Cooper on a Xerox machine and said enlarge by 50% and it popped out. It really has a very similar design to the rear ends of their other cars. It says Countryman along the back and you've got a power opening rear lift gate works out pretty well you have a little privacy cover there and i gotta say for the most part the size of the trunk is quite good and you have to keep in mind that this is still a subcompact crossover suv so it competes with something like the kia nero that we featured earlier i have to say that the rear trunk space is superb on this vehicle uh, we were using it a couple days ago we had uh, we were actually picking up some blinds we were also getting rid of my daughter's old bicycle fit in there with no problem and the other feature that they have underneath here You've got picnic sitting, so you can sit on the back of your trunk. Maybe you have like a little table, you pull up to something that, uh, like I really honestly have no idea why, but uh, if you pull up to something and you're sitting here, then you can hang out. So if you're, uh, again, kind of more of an outdoorsy type person and you go for, I don't know, a picnic, you want to sit down and there's no seating at the park, but you want to sit and have your lunch anyway, you have this little mat. Actually, it's pretty comfortable sitting on the back here as I bounce along. You got good support. So, I mean, if you really want to sit in the trunk, you could do it. So when you jump off to, it's got like a magnet. So when you put it in, it does kind of float a little bit above. So it's out of the way. And then, I mean, you could use that space underneath there as well. There is a good amount of space. Like I said, I'm quite impressed with the amount of space you get in the back of this vehicle. 
Now, finishing up around the back, you do have your backup camera. It is pretty much the same thing that BMW offers on all their products. So when you turn the wheels, the guiding lines will move with you. And there are four parking sensors along the back also to help. And it's quite cool because we'll show you on the inside, there is like a ambient light ring and it will light up with the color of your parking sensor. So as you get closer, that light will start to go yellow and then red if you're too close. Now, the one thing that Mini certainly has going for it is a very unique design throughout, not only the outside, but the inside too. And I'm really impressed with the way that everything is laid out. I mean, the function of it might not quite be there. Uh, something like the start stop is down here in the middle of really where you would expect your radio controls to be on most cars. So I'm always finding myself looking for a start stop button up here. So they do put things in different positions, but I have to say that they really did make a really good effort to make this vehicle feel very different from other products sold under the BMW brand. For example, you've got more like uh, fighter pilot switches up here to control things like the sunroof or your ambient lighting. There's about 12 different colors that you can have, a lot of reds, a lot of oranges, um, but you can have blue and purple and green, all sorts of different ambient lighting, and it really is throughout. You can have it on the circle here around your media controls, along the doors, the door handles, the little lights up top on uh, other BMWs would be an orange light for your sort of ambient lighting at night, but you can control all of those colors. Now, the only thing is the rest of the instrument cluster will stay orange, the same kind of orange that BMW has been using for decades now. So if you do like the green, for example, uh, all the other buttons are still going to be orange throughout. So it is a little different. I like it kind of at the orange color just to match everything else that's on the inside. But I have to say that there's just so much ambient lighting. And uh, as much as we'd like to be able to drive this car at night and show you it, it's just not possible with our, our camera equipment. So we can't really show you too well, but you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of how the ambient lighting looks. Now, for the rest of the interior, again, it's very different compared to what BMW offers on their other products. This is obviously similar to what Mini is doing, but I have to say that the space and seating up here is quite good. I'm comfortable. I have a good position, even though I am quite big for this type of car. I do find that I fit into it very well. Uh, steering wheel is at a good position. I'm not a huge fan of it though. One thing I've noticed is uh, with the heads up display, it does have a color heads up display. It really is sort of critical that you have that. Uh, whereas in other cars, if there's a heads up display, you can use it or not. But the problem is what I found, let's say you want to switch tracks. Most manufacturers put a button on your steering wheel to switch to the next track. But the problem is it's not switching track. You have an up and down button. So what you do is you have to actually select whether you want to go forward or back and then push the OK button. So basically it's two presses every time and you really have to use the heads up display in order to see that. So you do rely on it a lot more in this car than you do with other vehicles. But aside from that, you have a very unique gauge cluster with, uh, you know, <laughs> 200 kilometers plus is a checker flag, I guess, to say that you win. Um, but it works really well. There is a small, very small multi-information display there, uh, and it can show you things like your trip computer and uh, distance stamps, very basic things like that. Uh, but it'll also tell you if your auto start stop is active, cruise control is active, things like that. But aside from that, you know, the biggest feature as far as I'm concerned is the center here. I drive absolutely the best. When it comes to BMW, uh, they've really got it perfect when it comes to iDrive. I love it so much. Uh, easily my favorite. When it comes to consumer stuff, we love Kias. Uh, and I guess, I don't know, I mean, is Mini considered premium? Is it considered consumer? Who knows? Um, so it's hard to say if this really would compete in the same aspect as Kia's infotainment system, but for now, we'll just assume that it is premium luxury oriented, and I love it, absolutely phenomenal. And guess what? This car, so much going for it, wireless Apple CarPlay. So for example, here's my phone. It's not connected as you can see here, but I go into the menu, click CarPlay, and it's there. I don't have to have this plugged in anymore. It's so great. You can leave it in your pocket, and you can just use this without having to touch anything else without plugging it in because it's <laughs> really silly. The uh, USB here is kind of in the center. And then where do you put your phone, right? There's no compartment anywhere, really. I mean, you've got little cup holders and a little tray, uh, but you can't put your phone anywhere. There's nowhere to put it. So the fact that you can use wireless CarPlay is great. BMW is the only one so far that we know of that has that. And if you have a phone other than the iPhone 8 Plus, so maybe an iPhone 8, there is a wireless charger underneath the armrest here, just my phone doesn't fit. So you need a slightly smaller phone to be able to use that. So if you did have you know, an iPhone 8, you could use it with that because BMW does not support Android Auto. And it's kind of silly because any other phone that has a wireless charger is going to be an Android phone. BMW does not support Android Auto at all. I don't even think they're gonna be planning on doing it. So as much as you'd like to use your Android phone and wirelessly charge it, 
you're not going to be using Android Auto up here. So I think it's a little silly. So really, the iPhone 8 is the only phone right now that you can have wirelessly charging and wireless CarPlay. What can you do? But aside from that, everything else really works well. Again, iDrive, phenomenal. And, uh, and moving down through that, you've got dual zone automatic climate control. It's a little different. Uh, you know, you push the auto button and it'll do uh, basically auto for your setting, which uh, is either floor or upwards or towards the windscreen, but it doesn't do the fan. So you still can select the fan speed on its own. And when you change something like the fan speed, your little light ring around your iDrive controller will change as well. So if you change the temperature, it'll show you where you're kind of putting it on the screen. So it helps a little bit if you're not trying to keep your eyes more on the road, then instead of looking further down into your center console here, you can kind of keep your eyes a little bit more towards the road and just see where that ring is going. So I think it's kind of cool. Nice little features. Again, we really don't see that in any other car. Moving down again, we had the start stop button, your sport mode. Uh, we're going to talk about that more on the test drive portion of it. And then moving through the center console, you have your shift knob and your iDrive control. It's really laid out. Uh, again, aside from the start stop button, it's really laid out pretty well. Uh, the start stop button certainly is a form over function, uh, but we do like, you know, it's got a good click to it when you push it. It does feel like you're starting up the, uh, the engine to a jet fighter. But uh, other than that, the interior is really straightforward. And continuing with the little quirks, there's two sunshades here. One on the side and then one on the front for your driver. And the little microphones. They're actually microphones. Now the other few little things that we noted about it, it does have a dual panel moonroof up top, but it's not a full shade. So when I do close it here, it certainly blocks out the sun, but it's like a netting. So you still can see essentially the light coming through there. So if you really don't like sunroofs, period, you prefer to have a metal roof there, uh, I think you are going to have to see if there's a way to configure it without a sunroof completely because this blocks out quite a bit of the light, but not all of it. The back seat space is all right. It's pretty comparable to, again, the Kia Nero in terms of legroom. Uh, you do have a little cup holder that pops out of the armrest and really just little vents so you can change uh, you know, whether the vent is on or off. But really, there's no other surprises back there. You can fold the seats flat. It is a 40-20-40 split, so you can fold the center down if you have to put like skis in there or uh, just one side or the other. So a little tiny little thing like that kind of helps if you have a car seat in there. Uh, you don't have to specify which side you're going to be putting it on in order to fold it like a 40-60. You can fold uh, either seat down independently which is nice if you have larger items, as well as a kid, they need to fit. Now, the last quick thing we're gonna go over is uh, safety tech, or lack thereof. Uh, I know most people, you know, who are really enthusiasts, they like driving their cars, they uh, will probably get this with a manual anyway, but a lot of them don't like the safety tech like blind spot monitoring or collision avoidance. This car doesn't have it. It doesn't have any of it, actually. There is no blind spot monitoring. There is no active cruise control. There is no collision avoidance. Uh, and really, there's only parking sensors on the back with that camera. But you know what? As much as I love talking about the inside of this car, because it really is a lot of fun, it is more fun driving it. So... backfire is quite nice but i have to say first thing i noticed when putting this car into sport mode it sounds really phenomenal i just don't think it's real i have a feeling that this car pumps audio into your cabin especially when you put it in sport mode because there is a big difference in terms of the audible note that comes out of the back of that exhaust especially when you put it into sport mode but it does sound good even if it might be fake but listen to this maybe you can hear it Like a little throttle blip a little bit of a little backfire almost and again is it real not sure but it sounds very nice i've had a lot of fun it's really been an enjoyable car and it's one of the few cars that i've driven where i'm actually driving in manual shift mode the entire time just because it is more enjoyable to be able to do the shifting yourself now so it ends up happening when we talk about doing a vehicle that has an automatic transmission and i say oh it's fun to be able to shift into it the gears yourself with the manual mode and people are gonna say well just get the manual yeah you certainly could 
if you wanted to. Nobody's going to stop you from it. But the automatic is the one that we have here. It wasn't my choice. This is just the way the BMW configured it when they gave it to us. So we're going to use it. Oh my God, it's nice. That, that backfire, man. Come on. Oh, I just hope it's real. They are doing something to make it sound good. And I don't know, man. The whole point of buying a car is to enjoy it yourself, not for what other people around you are thinking. So you know what? Who cares if it's real or not? I like the sound of it. Oh, when you let off the gas, so mm, mm, mm. That's good. This finger looking good. I like it. I don't care. A lot of people, we posted this on Reddit, a lot of people said, you know, the minis have gone kind of down in terms of their, you know, ride quality and feel. And now that they're bigger, and yes, I mean, this is the Countryman. So it's really not a mini anymore. It's quite large. When you're driving along, people noticed it, right? I mean, it's a mini. There's not a whole lot of them out here. Kind of looks like the Kia Soul right there, and same kind of silhouette to it. But I think, obviously, the fact that this is a John Cooper Works helps uh, to distinguish it a little bit. You've got the red front grille and then, uh, obviously, the badging all over the place. Tell everybody that it is a JCW version of the Mini Countryman. And i got to say, I, I've, I've enjoyed it. I really like it. I think it's one of the few cars that I've really enjoyed uh, more than I expected. You know, we, we had it booked, and I thought, great, you know, we're going to do it. Um, it's going to be fun to, to be able to drive around. But after driving, I've really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. And, uh, you know, the ride is, is quite good. Uh, we haven't really been able to go into sort of the, you know, sport true mode that they have because uh, when you set it up through iDrive, there actually is a lot of difference between the iDrive here on the Mini Cooper compared to the BMW version. So uh, when you put it into the sport mode, it actually tells you, do you want it to be just a regular sport car um, with, you know, a little bit more performance oriented or do you want that go-kart like handling as well? You can change what you really want. So if you really just want nice uh, tight handling and to be able to go around corners really quick, then you can have that or you can have the speed or you can have both. And that's the way that it is set up here. And especially in manual shift mode, where you have everything kind of in the sportier version of this and certainly sounds that way pulls that way too in traffic and if you're uh, wondering where we are we're not in our little town today so uh, today's where are we quiz ho oh, ho you tell me where we are and if uh, if you do you win you win a prize the prize is that you win that's the prize so you can tell us where in Quebec we are I'll give you a hint we are on the south side of Montreal that is all you're going to get today. But let's talk about the rest of the drive of this vehicle. I mean, most people are obviously interested in the performance aspect, considering this is the John Cooper Works, but you still have to live with it on a daily basis. And maybe you don't want to have it in manual mode. Maybe you don't even want to have it in sport mode. Maybe you want to have it in green mode, minimalism, which is what we're in right now. And it really changes the overall feel of the car. First of all, I don't have to shift it anymore, so I can kind of relax. The instrument cluster also changes too to show you whether or not you're being conservative with your foot pedal. So for right now, we're, uh, you know, we're, I mean, we're coasting, so it's as fuel efficient as you can get. And then uh, it says that we've saved ourselves an extra 10 kilometers. And the only thing I don't like about that is it says that we've saved 10 kilometers, I guess, since our fill up in uh, in eco mode here in minimalism mode but the problem is it doesn't take into account how much i've been ripping the hell out of this car so really even though it says we're at 10 kilometers 10.6 that we've added i've probably wasted about 55 60 kilometers just today ripping it around in sport mode because it really is a lot of fun uh, but putting it into minimalism mode you can really feel that the gas pedal is a lot less responsive you put your foot down and sometimes i even feel when i come to a stop um, you know, it almost feels like it just doesn't have enough power to go into it. So it's almost a little too green. And I think this would probably be ideal if you're driving it really in a city, something like Montreal or Toronto, where uh, you're really just going in between traffic lights all the time, then it probably helps out a little bit more. You can keep it in normal mode. And when the car starts up, it's going to be in normal mode anyway. But uh, I have been driving it in both sport mode and in the green mode just to kind of see the difference. And it really does feel like a completely different vehicle when you're in green. There's no doubt that this has been one of the most enjoyable weeks I've had since starting Test Drive. This Mini has surprised me a lot more than I ever thought it would, and I'm really going to miss it when it's gone. I never thought myself as a Mini fan, but after a week I've added this charming subcompact crossover SUV to my list of cool cars. There's also a lot that we liked about it overall. 
the customization available through Mini is really second to none, with endless paint options, leather choices, trim pieces, and different decals to show off your love for Great Britain. The exhaust sound is also top notch, especially since our GoPro picked it all up from outside of the car. iDrive is also a serious winner, easily the best infotainment system on earth, with a lot of quirky changes to suit the Mini's fun and energetic personality iDrive's wireless integration of Apple CarPlay is also a game changer, as this is a feature that we've been asking for since we first reviewed Apple CarPlay back in the fall. And finally, how could I wrap up a likes list without having ambient lighting on here? In fact, it's probably a crime I didn't mention at first. I know a lot of our viewers are like me, in wanting more ambient light to make night driving more interesting. The Mini goes above and beyond to make that a reality. Now there are some dislikes to go over. No car is perfect. Our Android friends are going to be super disappointed that Android Auto is not in the gameplay for Mini or BMW, so that excludes a huge portion of drivers looking at smartphone integration with their car. Also, the lack of safety tech as an option feels like a missed opportunity, considering some economy cars have blind spot monitoring and pre-collision alert as standard kit on their base models, but almost everyone has it as an option somewhere. The wireless charging cradle is too small for phones like my iPhone 8 Plus or the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, which are two relatively popular devices. And finally, the start-stop button is such a cool looking button, but it's in the worst spot. Not only do I keep reaching along the dash to turn the car on, but I've accidentally turned it off several times when putting the car into park. The design of this car certainly takes precedent over the functionality, but I guess that's part of the charm of owning something as unique as this. We would have loved to put the all-wheel drive system to good use during our week with this countryman, but for once the weather was actually quite cooperative here. It's definitely a plus in climates like ours, where snow and rough roads can be conquered easier with a good all-wheel drive system like the one found on this Mini. And is fitting considering some subcompact crossover SUVs usually come as front-wheel drive, whereas the countryman is all for all the time. Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the 2018 Mini John Cooper Works Countryman All 4. What do you think of this car? Is its charming design and sporty heritage enough to make it a compelling vehicle in the ever competitive crossover market? Do you think Mini has lost its way? Or is BMW smart in offering a wider range of products to appeal to a changing marketplace? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to click that thumbs up button if you liked this episode and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Until next time, take care.